Ever since Apple's iPhone XR hit stores back in October 2018, I pretty much constantly had mine stuffed in either my backpack or my pants. I use it all the time for streaming media, gaming, and of course, those non-stop camera comparisons. So after almost half a year, would I recommend the iPhone XR to Apple fans? And is it a better option than the iPhone XS, which costs about 250 quid more? Well, here is my long-term 2019 Apple iPhone XR review. And don't forget for more than latest great mobile tech, so pog subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers. So first up, the iPhone XR definitely still feels like a chunky monkey compared with most of the Android phones I've reviewed recently. That 6.1 inch screen is actually modestly compact when you consider how many Androids come close to the 6.5 inch mark now. But Apple's handset is cursed with thick bezels, especially down those left and right edges. This is one seriously wide load right here, and it's nowhere near as easy to handle as the more premium iPhone XS. And at just a shade under 200 grams, you'll definitely feel the iPhone XR when it's sat in your pocket as well. I suppose that's a good thing if you're worried about it being nicked or anything like that. And yes, I'd highly recommend slapping a case and a screen protector on as soon as you whip this thing out of the box. After just a few months, my handset already looks like it was run over by a cement mixer, and I haven't even dropped the thing on a hard floor. Every surface there is coated in scratches and scuffs. Still, at least the iPhone XR is IP67 water and dust resistant because a couple of times it's ended up in the sink. The complete lack of a fingerprint sensor on these new iPhones definitely still seems quite strange, although thankfully it only really proves a pain in those low light conditions when the otherwise excellent Face ID starts to struggle a bit. Although having to swipe up the screen every time you want to unlock the device definitely gets very old very fast. Still, only the Huawei Mate 20 Pro has come close to this thing for accurate unlocking, even when I'm wearing shades and a hat. Definitely a big thumbs up there. Now, like many Android phones these days, there's no headphone jack here, which can prove quite annoying at times. Cue a lot of rummaging around in my backpack for the annoying dongly thing every time my Bluetooth headphones give up on life. Thankfully, I've had no issues with Bluetooth connectivity, even in hideously overcrowded places like MWC and London Bridge Station. And the stereo speaker output on the iPhone XR is still solid enough for enjoying video on the go or in any noisy places. Just don't use it for music, obviously. And while that IPS screen isn't as advanced as the gorgeous OLED panel slapped on the iPhone XS, I'm perfectly happy when it comes to kicking back with some shows. The lack of HDR action is a bit of a shame, but visuals are still quite crisp with a natural vibe. And on top brightness, this thing is positively blinded. Now, when it comes to the software and the general features, I'm definitely still more of an Android fan compared with iOS, mostly due to the enhanced customization and more logical settings menus. However, I can fully understand why some people swear by Apple's iOS instead, especially coming from a security and accessibility viewpoint. You get the same UI experience here on the iPhone XR as you do on the more premium XS, and the same slick performance too. Apple's latest A12 chipset is stuffed inside, and it's an absolute beast. Everyday running is super smooth, while games play with nary a stutter in sight, and they look pretty bloody lovely to boot. However, I am still seeing a couple of weird little glitches here and there with this handset. One of the biggest ball lakes with the iPhone XR is definitely the ongoing Wi-Fi issue. I find that a few times a week it simply disconnects from my home network without any kind of warning whatsoever. How useful. I've got no bloody idea why it happens or why Apple hasn't fixed it yet, but you know, at least the latest iOS update gave us some more animojis to play around with, so... So that's awesome. No worries on the battery front though. I've never had the iPhone XR die on me before day's end, even if I'm constantly whipping it out to shoot some home movies or stream a bit of video. And over time, the battery life doesn't appear to have changed despite countless updates. As for recharging, you get Qi wireless support if you can't be bothered with any of that cable nonsense, while plugging it in gives you a full battery in not much more than an hour. And I still really like the camera on this thing too. You may lose out that telephoto lens of the iPhone XS, but the XR still proves more than solid for everyday family photos and home movies. The portrait mode may not impress as much as many rivals thanks to the lack of a dedicated depth sensor, but it's still surprisingly accurate at least. And although there's no night modes here, this blow does do a pretty good job of capturing detail in low light without blowing out any lighter elements. And yes, shooting at 4K resolution results in some stunning footage, especially at that hyper-realistic 60fps level. And of course, the image stabilization remains very respectable. Of course, the major sticking point for me is unfortunately still that asking price. The iPhone XR right now, six months on, still starts from £749. Just like the Google Pixel, that's far too extortionate, especially when you consider that you can pick up premium Android flagship phones for £400 or under. But anyway, enough of my experiences. Are you using the iPhone XR? And if so, how are you finding it? Otherwise, if you're thinking of grabbing one, definitely let us know down below whether you're still tempted and if not, why not? 
And don't forget for more on the latest and greatest mobile tech to plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers.